guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Brittany. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys my curly human hair wig routine is when I first get a wig, I wash it and everything. One of my subscribers, her name is Sandra. She basically in her comment, she was like, she was highly considering purchasing a human hair curly wig and she wanted to know what my process was to like maintain it and you know, just prepare it before wearing it. So in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating it on this kinky, curly edge wig from Harella Hair. So shout out to Harella Hair for sponsoring today's video. So if you wanna see my curly hair routine, then keep on watching. Okay, while I'm showing you guys the unboxing of this wig, I'm gonna go ahead and read the specs for you guys. So this is the Harella Hair kinky curly wig. This does come with kinky edges, kinky curly edges. Uh, this is 150% density, comes in 20 inches. So I'm gonna let you guys watch the rest of the unboxing and then we'll get into bleaching these knots. Okay, so the knots on this wig, they were pretty dark and I wanted this to be a really nice install. So I'm gonna do something that I haven't done in a while, which is bleach my knots. So I have my mixing bowl, my 30 volume developer, some purple shampoo and my powder bleach. So I put about two scoops in here of the powder bleach at first. And then I just kind of eyeball it because you want the consistency to be kind of like frosting or like toothpaste. So just play around with the measurements. Um, you should be able to have your brush stand up in it without it toppling over. So I'm gonna be mixing it and then you'll see the brush kind of topple over because it wasn't a thick enough consistency. So I added some more of the powder bleach um, to the mixture and it was the right consistency. So I took the wig and I put it upside down and I am just gonna take the mixture and put it on top of the lace. I'm not pressing down really hard because we don't want it to go through the lace and seep onto the hair. So I'm using a light pressure and I'm applying it all to the lace there. And then I put some, some aluminum foil over the top so it would you know activate it and let it process faster. So I kept this on for 40 minutes. And then these knots are pretty stubborn in my opinion. So. It didn't take like I wanted it to. Um, so I washed the bleach mixture off and everything and I looked at the knots. They did lift and get a little bit lighter but they were still not light enough for me. So what I ended up doing was re-bleaching the knots uh, using 40 volume developer this time. And because this is a higher volume of the developer, it, it processed a lot faster. So instead of 40 minutes, I only kept it on for like 15 to 20 minutes, but you have to keep checking your your knots to make sure they're not over bleached. So just periodically go and check your knots. So I put the aluminum foil back on it. I rinsed it off. Of course the lace, um, the knots did get a little bit more brassy and orange, but that's why we have that purple shampoo. So they did lift and the knots look a lot more small and that's gonna be really good with making the that's going to be really good for making the install a lot more natural. So I took the purple shampoo and I put it on the lace and I let it sit on the lace for about 10 minutes while I was doing something else. Um, just, just let it process a little bit so it can take away some of that brassiness. So I kept mine on for about 10 minutes and then I rinsed it off. And after I rinsed off the purple shampoo, I went ahead and shampooed and conditioned this wig. I used the Myel Rosemary Mint shampoo. That's what I shampooed it with. And for the conditioner, I use this Innersense Hydrating Cream Conditioner. It's a brand that I use on my natural hair. So after I washed and conditioned this hair, I did tweeze the hairline up a little bit because it was a little bit thick. And I'm using my Continuous Flow Spray Bottle just to wet down the hair. And I'm gonna wear this wig as a side part. So I went ahead and created a curved side part with my rat tail comb. 
And then I am going to, I'm going to take some of my Nairobi foam and just, you know, kind of mold the top. And I could have done that with my Shea Moisture mousse, but for some reason I did that. Um, and then I kind of shaped the hairline a little bit with the kinky edges that it comes with. So I, I'm taking my Shea Moisture Curl Mousse and I'm going to be clumping and defining the curl. So I took my travel size of the Felicia Leatherwood brush and then I ran the comb. I ran the brush through the hair to clump the curls. And then I took individual sections and I kind of shingled the curls to make them more defined. You don't have to do this. You can just clump the curls with the, with the brush, but I just wanted them a lot more defined. So I did this process all over the head and I'm gonna let you guys watch that process. been two days since this wig has dried I just let it dry on my mannequin head I didn't mention this in my Amazon wig essentials video that I recently posted watch it if you haven't especially if you're a beginner and you are looking for all of the wig supply essentials that you need for a good install watch that video but I should have included my mannequin head here this is a canvas mannequin head for a 23 inch circumference head that's the size of my head and I got this new wig stand for Christmas here. So I do a lot of prepping of my wigs and stuff on my mannequin head and my wig stand. Um, and I let them, you know, air dry and everything on those. So this is what the hair looks like after it's been air dried. It is beautiful. I hope you guys can really get that curl pattern on camera. I'm going to go ahead and cut the lace and apply this. I'm probably going to go ahead and cut it on the mannequin head i'm just going to cut slightly in front of the hairline okay so i have gone ahead and cut off the lace here i feel like this is going to be a good install this lace so today i cut my lace off with a razor while it was on my mannequin head i usually just use my smaller scissors but we'll see how this looks and i adjusted my straps because this cap i don't know what size it is but it's pretty large on my head and i do have a larger head so i'm i adjusted the adjustable elastic band within the cap. So it'll be easy to possibly wear it glueless. And I say possibly because I don't know if I'm going to. Okay. I could cut some, um, some hair off the ears. So I need to fluff this out. And I do think I'm actually going to cut some of the hair off the ears on the side over here because it's fine because my natural hair it's not this exact curl pattern but having my own edges out on the side is gonna work well with this hair and it's okay to cut some of the wig if you have to to make it more customized to your head I am just going to take some Garnier Fructis Anti-Frizz Serum. Just put a little bit on my hand so I can fluff this hair out without it getting frizzy. Really pretty curl pattern. So I want to soften up some of the curls um, and give them some more weight. So I'm just taking certain like smaller pieces, just certain sections and just twisting it up and it'll dry probably by the time I do my makeup. Not the whole area like I did the other day, just certain areas, like the ends and any spots that are a little bit frizzy. Okay, I wanna experiment and see what 
because I'm recording and pretty much natural lighted in front of a window, which concealer is gonna, or foundation is gonna work best for my lace. So I'm gonna start off with my concealer here. This is J13 from Juvia's Place. And I'm gonna use this um, high definition brush that I got from, I think this is Shop Miss A. So I have some on my brush here and I'm gonna put it underneath. I don't really do this um, anymore, but I just, I'm just trying to see what, what can happen with the color of my lace, cause it hasn't been um, working that well outside, you know? And my lace and everything looking good in outside is really important to me because I've had some situations where my lace and stuff looked a mess outside. And that's why I do sunlight tests for you guys because I know in real life, it's just no of benefit to you guys for something to look good on camera and then in real life it looks bad. You know, it's no benefit to me either because I can't stand that. Just putting it underneath my leg. Oh, that looks so much better. It looks a lot better. It's not perfect, but that looks much better. After tinting it, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna do a glueless install the best that I can. So I am going to start to use bobby pins, certainly on the sides over here to kind of stretch it and create tension. So I'm gonna hook, will that look right? I think it will. Yeah, that's gonna look right. Okay, so stretching right here to create some tension and I'm folding some of the sides under cause we don't need that. Taking a bobby pin and I'm gonna place it under here. And the good thing about this being a kinky edges wig, I have kinky edges. So right here, I can just leave that how it is, or I can like emphasize that with my own kinky edges, which I will. So I'm just taking a rat tail comb and just kind of pulling my own out right there. saw the process of me first uh just you know trying on the wig and seeing what it was like bleaching the knots on this wig to make it look more natural shampooing and conditioning this wig and how i got the curls like how i get my curls together and so i decided to use my juvia's place concealer in shade 13 and this brush here that i got from shop miss a this is the f10 brush but i'm sure you can use any brush it'll do the same thing and it actually worked very well with tinting my lace and getting it to look 
more natural. So um, I did do a sunlight test for you guys and I did it without makeup and the lace to me looked very good. Now, of course, it's always going to be lace, so you're going to see it a little bit, but it looks better than so many of my um, installs lately. This one was really, really good. It looked good without makeup. Um, and I attribute to, I attribute that to applying my wig in natural lighting. Right now I have my studio lights going because I'm done with my application and everything. And on camera it might, if it comes off light or anything on camera, I kind of don't care because in real life the lace looks really good outside. So, and without makeup applied. So, I think I'm going to be doing that with my human hair wigs and my synthetic lace frontal wigs. Like, applying my concealer underneath and just, you know, letting it dry because it, it tinted my lace very well. And this is a glueless install. I don't have this glued down. That's my curly hair routine. Um, in her comment, I think she said something about this, the curly wigs like dry out. They do dry out. They're very high maintenance. Even though I feel like curly human hair wigs are super easy compared to like body wave wigs because you have to pull out you know, your hot tools or whatever and curl it up and do all that stuff. But with kinky curly wigs or curly wigs, after you've applied your product, your mousse, and you've set your curls and you let it dry, it's ready to go. But will it always stay, you know, the level of definition or whatever that you want? It won't because it performs like human hair because it's human hair. So if it's raining outside, it's going to respond just like it would with your natural hair. It'll swell up and do all the things. So keep that in mind. This That's the good thing about synthetic wigs. Synthetic wigs, once you have it how you want it, it won't really respond to the elements like that. But human hair wigs do. So keep that in mind. And I think she also asked, how do you store this wig? How do you store your, your kinky curly wigs or your curly wigs? Um, I'm going to do actually record a how I store my wigs video right after this. It won't go up immediately after this, but you guys will see, see that soon. But with my curly wigs and my kinky curly wigs, I tend to put them in satin bags because they do dry out. Yeah, so it's going to preserve a little bit of the moisture in your wig, but... If you don't, if you put your, you know, kinky curly or curly wig in even a satin bag, if you open it up like over a month later or something like that, it's going to be dried out. So you'll have to wash it again and either wash it again or add more mousse and water to, you know, activate the curls again. So um, most companies like Hirelli Hair, they provided a silk bag so you can store your wig in this like satin bag here. And I, every human hair company that sends me a satin bag, I usually keep them because they're very convenient to have. So, um, yeah. So as far as this wig, I'm so glad that I took the extra time to bleach the knots because I haven't been doing that. I haven't done that in probably two years or something like that. You see the difference with it looking natural. But of course, I've showed you installs without bleaching your knots. So you don't have to do that. Uh, the only con I had with this wig was that the knots were not bleached, but Harella Hair is a more affordable company, so you have to consider that. You have to consider that when you are purchasing from more affordable companies like this. It wasn't too much trouble, but it, this, the knots were pretty stubborn and I did have to bleach them twice to make sure they were to my liking. The curls are very pretty. Of course, the Shea Moisture Frizz Free, Frizz Free Curl Mousse and the Felicia Leatherwood combo is just... It works every time and the curly edges on this wig I actually enjoy them this time just because it helps so much with like you know the glueless install and camouflaging you know any mistakes you might have like this is a glueless install and I feel like it looks really good in different lighting situations I did have some shedding with this wig during the washing process but I did bleach it bleach the knots twice so that has something to do with shedding so I'm not gonna put that on Harella hair that's more to me bleaching the knots um but overall this is a really nice wig and I'm glad I put some elbow grease into it and if you want your wig to be at its best especially if you're paying a more affordable price you're gonna have to do a little bit more to it to make it its best so if you are interested in this wig from Corella Hair, you can head over to their website and pick it up there. I'll have it all, all the links and everything in the description box for you guys. 
and all the products that I used to get this wig together. I recently put up a Amazon Wig Essentials video. If you haven't watched that video, you should watch it. I recently put up a how to customize, apply, and remove your, your lace front wig. It's for synthetic wigs, but I use the same process for my synthetic wigs and human hair wigs, so it's relevant to you guys um, regardless of the kind of, you know, wig you have. So watch that. I have some more great videos coming for you guys. So make sure you are subscribed and your notifications are turned on. Thank you so much for supporting my channel and shout out to Harella Hair for sponsoring today's video. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.